Welcome back to the Astra channel and we're here today to talk with the structures department about how the structure of Astra's vehicle Transcendence will be built. And just to remind you, we are of course building Transcendence with the goal in mind of getting to the Carmen line. So we need to figure out a little bit about how exactly we plan to do that. And one of the departments that's involved in this is the structures department. So today we have Bizvajit here. Hello. And yeah, he's going to tell us a little bit about the structure system and uh, what it's all about. Bizvajit, tell me a little bit about your role here at Astra and why structures are so important to you. I'm currently pursuing master's in space engineering. Uh, at Tivni Premen, uh, third semester. Uh, I am head of structure department. Uh, structure is important to me because to, uh, let's say, to realize your dream, like let's say we want to go to uh, moons or let's say Mars. So to get, get there, we have to have big structure. You know, now you can say uh, like, the, uh, for moon landing, we have to have like Saturn V rocket. Now to go to Mars, we uh, we need Starship. So yeah, like to for uh, Astra to reach its uh, its goal, like realize its dream to reach Karman Line, they also need whole rocket structure. So that's why structure. So give us a little, give us a little bit of rundown. Of what are the sizes involved? So what is the size of our vehicle going to be? What is the diameter? What is the length? and uh, just so that we have an impression in our mind of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, like our structure mainly consists of mostly four parts. One is the main part is the oxidizer tube, which length is uh, four meter and its dia is out, out, outer side dia, uh, outer dia is 250 mm. And uh, yeah, we have thickness of the uh, tube is three mm and uh, we have selected a uh, particular uh, layout uh, to have our strength twice in the circumferential direction com uh, like compared to the axial direction uh, you know due to thin pressure vessel we know like uh, in the circumferential direction stress is two times compared to the axial direction secondly it's consists of like uh, to connect the, that thing, like we have upper bulkhead as well as middle bulkhead. So all these three things, upper bulkhead, uh, this uh, carbon fiber tube and middle bulkhead uh, constitutes our whole uh, oxidizer tank. Then from uh, middle bulkhead till end, we have a combustion chamber. It's also made of same CRPF tube and at end we have a nozzle mount from where we will fix our nozzle. and. Uh, in the top, there is our avionics bay as well as recovery bay. Uh, on top, it's covering there is a nose cone. Most of the aerodynamics loads will be acting on that. Uh, all right, so that's kind of an idea of the size of the rocket. Um, why Why exactly did we choose to go for carbon fiber as the material for the structure? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty expensive, it sounds like. Um, obviously, other rockets like the, space, the Starship have decided, no, 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 that's not good for us but why have we decided to go that uh, way yes earlier we have uh, chosen like uh, uh, aluminum 6061 and 6082 also uh, but with that we come up with thickness around 7 mm thickness if you consider the mass of the tube we had like mass budget constraint like our structure should not go beyond that constraint so to be in the safer side, like to have mass less than 50 kg, like cold structure mass. So we have gone with carbon fiber tube. Now everything is coming under, after considering fasteners, like those rivets as well, it's coming around less than 50 kg. That is our structure constraint. Okay, so and that's important because basically the way rockets work is that we have uh, a percentage of the rocket that's fuel that's going to be expelled out of the rocket so if you can make the rocket lighter then you can go faster because you'll have more what we call delta v so just to just to uh, recap the way that we manufacture carbon fiber usually is we have like basically a machine that has a bunch of thread of carbon fiber yeah. and then uh, there's a like a tube and then we we wind the fiber around that tube yes 
and then we put some resin into well, once we've wound a couple layers onto it and the thickness that we want we put some resin into it yeah. so that it's all bound together and then we put that all into an oven that cooks it so it hardens yes. and then boom you should have your carbon fiber too what are some challenges that come with trying to manufacture something out of carbon fiber that we are seeing right now there is past challenge like we didn't had bigger like uh, oven uh, size like our structure uh, like oxygen tank itself 4 meter long but they most of the uh, carbon fiber manufacturing companies they have only 3 meter long oven so that was the first important uh, like challenge we faced then coming to second challenge is getting um, manufacturing that tube locally because it's also we are not able to find like um, yeah like manufacturer in Bremen itself so we are looking in um, our neighbor country like uh, in, in Netherlands and uh, Denmark also uh, yeah and uh, that much technical knowledge when it comes to carbon fiber because it has to withstand uh, like 55 bar pressure so we thought like when it will the tube has to carry this 55 bar pressure so there will be a chance of leakage so like for longer period of, period of time let's say uh, before uh, lift up we have to keep it uh, let's say our uh, like filling will take around let's say 30 minutes or one hour so till that time uh, so there should not be any leakage through the carbon fiber tube so earlier we thought like should we go with aluminum liner so if you are adding aluminum liner that is also adding the mass like it will add 6 to 8 kg to our whole structure mass then we came up with second idea can we go with polyamide coating but the thing with polyamide coating is here most of the people like they have very less knowledge like how to go with polyamide coating and uh, here also another thing is like uh, when we wind the thing like uh, the uh, fibers on our mandrel there are also some constant like uh, our structure we have like certain diameter and they don't have that diameter mandrel everywhere so mm -hmm. for that is also that was also a constant so uh, obviously uh, we have kind of some new thoughts about how this tank is coming together is there anything else that's interesting about this tank design like how you, you mentioned that we're gonna have a carbon fiber tube and then we're gonna have some bulkheads that are gonna um, go on to the top and bottom of the tube how are those being connected and how do we make sure that there's a seal between the bulkhead and the carbon fiber tube yeah, that's a good question like we have uh, groups on the, uh, the at the junction where this oxidizer tank is connected to our upper bulkhead or let's say a middle bulkhead so on the uh, at the junction point like there are we have groups there will have o-ring so it will give us that uh, pressure air tightness and uh, we are fastening uh, like screws uh, from like on top of this tube towards inside direction well are we planning to test this uh this interesting tank design anytime soon <laughs> yeah we have planning like we'll start assembling our stuff from mid of april and end of april we are planning to test another part of designing the structure system is understanding the loads that are acting on your structure so for us for the transcendence vehicle uh, the propulsion system tells us that we're going to have like 24 kilonewtons that are going to be on the acting on the structure and that's going to give us like up to 15 g's of acceleration which is, you know, pretty incredible. Yeah. So how do we make sure that our structure is strong enough to withstand those loads? Uh, we have designed some FM model. On FM model, we are applying this 24 kN uh, thrust reaction from bottom. And from top, we are also having dynamic pressure, uh, aerodynamic press, uh, dynamic loads, pressure load due to aerodynamic force. And in the meantime, we have like our structure uh, has to withstand this 55 bar pressure and uh, yeah we are making sure uh, with all uh, all the loads are applied like our structure can uh, maintain the integrity like the uh, it should maintain the structural integrity which is like at least two times with two times safety factor okay yeah. all right well business g thanks for stopping in and talking a bit about your system um and we're definitely looking forward to seeing the results of your testing 
at hearing your analysis of what <laughs> what went wrong or what went right in the test. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I'm also looking for it. Okay. All right. Thank you, and uh, good luck in the testing. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And remember, guys, to keep expanding your horizons. <laughs>